So doing a review of Blood Rage here, otherwise known as um, Nightmare at Shadow Woods. This is a review of the actual film itself, by the way, as opposed to the Blu-ray that you're seeing on the screen. Um, it was originally put together in 1983, I believe, but it wasn't actually released in cinemas or theatres until sometime later in 1987. But the basic um, storyline behind this one is that you've got two brothers, Terry and Todd. We first meet them as they're quite young. They're in the back of a car, which their mother is in the front of the vehicle with her boyfriend and they're kind of making out at a driving theatre and upon noticing this the boys are kind of asleep at first but they wake up as their mother and the boyfriend start kissing and they decide to es escape they don't want to witness that so they kind of go off on their own to explore the driving theatre and um, one of the brothers Terry actually um, surprisingly murders a fellow cinema goer or driving cinema goer and then quick thinking, he um, thinking on his feet, he actually puts the weapon in the hands of his twin brother, I believe he was called Todd, and um, smears his face with blood, thus framing his sibling, and actually then transpires that um, Todd takes the blame for the whole thing and gets sent to a mental in institution for 10 years. While um, Terry goes scot-free and we learn that he's since become the apple of his, the apple of his mother's eye, his face, she very much dotes on her son, thinking he's the perfect one, while the one in the mental institution, poor old Todd, is left to carry the can for the whole business of the murder. But um, we pick this story up ten years into the future, and um, it's around Thanksgiving time, and we learn that in the intervening years, Todd's being kind of in a catatonic state and not really revealed much about his role or lack of role in the actual killing. He's not really said much about it, but just around this time, he started to have recollections of what actually happened. He started to talk and be more lucid. And he started to say that he's actually innocent and that he wasn't responsible for the killings. Like I said, it's Thanksgiving around this time and um, the mother actually announces that she's going to get engaged to her new boyfriend, Brad. And she announces this around the Thanksgiving meal table and that doesn't sit well with the actually guilty son, but she thinks she's innocent, Terry. He's not very pleased to hear this news and later on he sees the couple kissing and that seems to anger him even further. So that kind of sets him off on a fresh rage of... Um, a fresh blood rage, if you, if you will, and a fresh murder spree transpires 10 years on. But coincidentally, to coincide with all of this, the brother who is in the mental institution news filters through that he's actually made his escape. And he's hope, you would think he's on the kind of quest to prove his innocence, but um, of course this also provides the perfect, uh, the perfect fall guy for his brother, who is on the murderous rampage that I mentioned, so he can kind of try and pin the crimes on his unfortunate brother once again, seeing that he's escaped from the mental institution. But um, very much the quest of um, of Tyus to try to prove his innocence from the first time when he was first obviously accused of the murder back in the driving theatre all those years previous. So that's the story behind it. I'm going to go on to the good points of this that I what I consider to be the good points, and I quite like the idea of just the whole twins. It's kind of a bold, innovative idea compared to most slashers. Um, didn't go down the route of the traditional kind of mass killer. So it's something a bit different, something a bit fresh. It's not the most original idea in the world, obviously, but you know, as far as flashes go, it was something a bit different. So I appreciated that. Sets it apart from most. It's not the typical kind of like monster like Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers or the kind of mass killer like in, say, Scream, where we have to kind of guess who it is or we try to guess who it is throughout. So it's certainly something a bit different compared to most other slasher films, certainly for the for the time anyway. Um, because of the fact that he's not really wearing any kind of costume, he's not the most scary, but Terry still manages to be quite um, quite a menacing figure because he's got kind of like a cold arrogance to him. And he's, in, in many cases, he's kind of killing off his friends. So, you know, he really seems like kind of a, um, a really cold-blooded character, kind of like a reptilian coldness to him at times. But he also seems to have like a sense of humour about what he's doing. So it really kind of makes him seem really unhinged and kind of crazy. So... He really does come across as quite a mental character, even though he's not the most scary looking. His his attitude is quite he's quite cold and um, certainly a bit chilling. So not hugely scary. It's more kind of like a fun slasher than a scary slasher, but the killer does have an air of menace to him to a degree. So that's a good point. Um, a good job from the actor that played Todd. The um, the two the two twins, the guilty one. Terry and the innocent one. Todd are actually played by the same actor. Does a really good job of kind of differentiating them. So. Um, it's really interesting to see him play two different characters that even though they're twins and they do look somewhat similar, obviously it's the same actor so they do look similar, but they've also got a bit of a difference to them in the way that they do their hair and, and, and such and the clothes they wear and the way they just do their facial expressions and so on. So it's really quite a good job from the actor. It's, um, it's quite interesting to see how, they, how, how he portrays the two characters differently. So that's um, nice to watch. 
There's some really fun, gory deaths in here as well. It's got it's really good for the gore. I mean, you can you probably heard about this one has been a bit of a notorious one for the gore. A lot of it was cut out of the um, cinematic release. But um, if you get the Blu-ray, this particular Blu-ray version that I've got here, I'll just show you the inside of it. We've got three versions. I watched the um, the composite cut, I believe it was called, which has got all the gore in, plus some of the extra scenes, the talky scenes that were kind of um, maybe in one of the other versions that weren't in the original Blood Rage one, but were in the Shadow Woods one. But it's a bit confusing, but we won't get into that. But basically, there's a lot of, um, if you watch the version that I did at least, there's a lot of really gory deaths, such as, um, well, you can probably guess someone gets the hand cut off. From you. As you can see from that, that's just one example of it. But um, yeah, some really nice gory scenes. So if you're into your blood and guts, you'll definitely be satisfied with this one. It's also kind of a seasonal slasher being set around Thanksgiving, like I mentioned be before. And to me, that's always kind of a bonus, even though I'm not in the USA, I'm from the UK, so I don't really celebrate Thanksgiving, or well, not really, I don't celebrate it whatsoever. But um, it's still nice to have kind of a seasonal slasher. I, I, I like it when the when films come out, kind of like um, you know April Fool's Day, Halloween, um, New Year's Eve, or that kind of thing. So for me, that's a bonus, but obviously only a small thing. But it's a nice one to watch around Thanksgiving if you're from the US, so I'll mention it as a positive even though I'm not from the US myself. Um, it's quite an effective ending with Terry, albeit by accident, receiving his comeuppance from an unlikely source. I don't want to say too much about the ending, but I thought it was quite good the way that they did it, and um, I enjoyed that. And finally, for the positive points, there's um, a really nice um, soundtrack to it, kind of like a synth score to it that um, really suits the film well and gives it a really nice kind of campy 80s vibe which really goes along well with the film and it's um, definitely a plus point. So the music is very, very good. Okay, on to the bad points now. It's possibly, um, in my opinion, it was a bit too quick to let us know which was the guilty twin and which was the um, innocent one. Well, maybe a, they could maybe have got some more mileage out of not actually revealing to us, the audience, who the killer was, or who the um, actual murderer was out of the two twins. Maybe kept us guessing for at least a short while. But maybe have made it a bit more suspenseful, but... It did work well the way that they did it, like I said, I, mean, I did think this, the main premise of the film was pretty good. So it certainly didn't you know, take away from the film that much, but the fact that they didn't do it like I'm describing now with this kind of having to guess who, who the evil one was, so to speak, and who was the good one. But perhaps they, that, that was something they could have done that maybe would have made, added like an, 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 sorry, an extra facet to it is what I'm trying to say, but it's only a small thing. Um, I don't think they really did a very good job of explaining what kind of um, setting the whole thing was in. I initially thought it was some kind of like holiday complex that the Brad character owned, but it actually turned out it was like, like a, a, a um, kind of establishment of condos with like a few um, amenities like a pool and such thrown in. But I was a bit confused initially as to where it was actually set and what what kind of um, place the whole thing was taking was was, was going on at really. So. Um, yeah, I was a little bit confused there. That's only a really minor thing, and that's probably just me that got confused there. That's probably not, not the case for most people, but just thought I'd throw that out there. Left me a little confused as to um, where the whole thing was taking place. Early on as well, one of, the, one of the key characters, Andrea, who is kind of the new girl in the area, when she's very first introduced, she's, she comes across as like really quite shy and not really very sure of herself, but then in the very next scene, she's kind of like the life and soul of the party. She's met these kids of which Terry is a member. A lot like the kind of local group of kids, and she's kind of integrated herself in it extremely quickly. In the very next scene, from when she was seeming quite shy when we first met her, she's now become like the leader of of the group. In like just the very next scene, it's a bit weird how they do that. I thought that was a bit odd, seeing that she didn't seem that short of of herself when we first met her just minutes previous. But that's again only a really small thing. We just thought I'd throw it out there. Also, I was a bit confused with the introduction of Terry's girlfriend Karen. I assume she's supposed to have come back from. Um, a different state perhaps or a different time where she was studying and she's come back for the Thanksgiving holiday but he didn't really do a very good job of explaining to me who, at least in my opinion who she was and I was a bit confused as to who she was supposed to be at first I quickly worked out that she was Terry's girlfriend but I don't think initially they did a very good job of explaining a, 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 exactly who she was and why she was at the Thanksgiving dinner but again it's, that's a really small thing but just something I've put out there you could, you could also say that perhaps some of the kills were a bit unrealistic in the sense that um, they would have required a great amount of strength. Like there's one character that gets completely cut in half, and um, you know this Terry character is only like a teenage boy. He wouldn't have he's not he's not, he's not like built like a athlete particularly, so you wouldn't think he'd have the strength to be able to do that. But you know it's all in good fun. You don't take it all too seriously. But if you really analyse and get that, probably would wouldn't be very possible for a relatively skinny guy to be able to do that. Also, I think a character gets their head hacked off at one point, and again, you could perhaps do that, but not without making an awful lot of noise, and um, 
he doesn't seem to make he doesn't seem to make any noise whatsoever when he cuts off the guy's head. So even though we don't actually see it on screen, we don't hear any noise. So um, it's a bit unrealistic there, perhaps, but. I'm just nitpicking here, really, just picking out really small things that don't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, like I said before, it's not really a scary slasher, it's more of a fun one, but if you are looking for something really kind of um, really chilling, then this is not really going to be the one for you. You're probably um, not going to be particularly scared by it, even though, like I said, the killer does have an air of menace to him at times because of his attitude more than his look. In terms of his costume and such, he doesn't really wear one whatsoever, he's just wearing normal clothes, he looks like a normal kid, so he's not really... It is scary up to a point, but it's not certainly not among the scariest ones. So you might be a bit disappointed if you're looking for a really terrifying slasher. But generally speaking, slashers aren't that scary anyway. They're more kind of fun. But it's certainly the case with this one being more fun than, any, than anything else. Okay, then, so on to the verdict now. And I thought it was um, a pretty good slasher with a few nice elements like the gore. Some of the deaths were really good. Like I mentioned, there's some really good gore effects for the time. I think done by the guy that went on to do... Um, some big films like Terminator 2. He actually has a cameo in the film as well. He's actually one of the people that gets killed. But um, yeah, it's also got a really different approach to it in terms of its storyline. Like I said before, near the start of the video, with the um, with us knowing from the start who the killer is and him kind of not having any kind of costume or whatever, it's kind of a bit different. Even though that is a bit of a double-edged sword because it doesn't make it, it means that there's no mystery and there's no and it's not as scary perhaps as it would as it could have been. It's still a fresh idea and, 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 and approach that is different from many slashers so it does kind of set it apart in that sense so it's kind of a good thing gives it a flavour all of its own so I think it's more of a positive than, than a negative but it is a bit of a double-edged sword it hasn't really aged that well it does come across as um, very 80s and kind of like a bit cheesy and lame and a bit hammy and campy but um, but on, on, on the whole that's kind of part of the whole fun of it but so it's not really a bad thing but it does look a bit Im embarrassing at times now if you're watching it back from in these present days. Um, there are some good acting roles in it as well. Or that didn't make sense, but I'll start again. There are some the actors have done a good job in at least a couple of the roles. The the one that plays the two brothers, the two twin brothers, like I said, they, they did a good job. And also the, the actress that played the role of the mother was um, she was very hammy and a bit over the top, but um, she came across as quite creepy and she really seemed quite unhinged herself. So she did a good job of um, really coming across as a bit of a crazy character. And perhaps that's where um, Terry got his mental urges from and his kind of homicidal urges rather I should say from maybe his, his mother was a bit unhinged as well to say the least. But she, so she did a good job though of um, acting the part. So I'd definitely say it's worth a look if you've heard about this one but never actually seen it definitely worth seeking out. I enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to give it a my star rating that out of five. I'm going to give it a um, one star. Now you see there's one, two, and I'm going to give it three stars. This might seem a bit low, so I've mainly probably been praising the film, probably picking out more good things than bad things. Many of the bad things that I mentioned were kind of really small things. I was kind of nitpicking, so it might seem like I'm being a bit harsh, just giving it three stars. But I kind of like to be objective when I'm going through the good points and the bad points, but the overall rating is kind of more based on my um, overall enjoyment after I've watched the film, and I didn't enjoy it as much as some, of that I'm going to, uh, some films that I'm going to later give a four to in future videos, so... It had to be a three to me overall, but it is a high three. And it only just missed out on getting a four. So even though it's only getting the three stars, it is definitely worth your time if you haven't seen it. So I definitely recommend it. But um, just the three stars for me. But like I said, it's a um, very much a high three. And by the way, if you're, only, if you're interested, by the way, in checking out the, um, the body count for this, which I'll try and kind of write about in detail in the description of the video, feel free to check that out. Obviously, that will contain major spoilers. There's the back, by the way, you probably can't read that. But um, anyway. Um, yeah, I'll certainly put a body count in there, so check that out if you want, but it will contain major spoilers. Okay, thanks for watching and goodbye.